if I met you in person and you asked me, how do I get into IT? This is the five different things that I would tell you to do. Hey guys, what's up? So today I spent a bit of time this morning just looking through YouTube, watching some videos around getting started in IT and got me a bit nostalgic thinking about whenever I started out in IT and I think it was much easier back then because you either worked in IT, you didn't have cybersecurity or networking, you just did IT, you just did everything. And now it's a bit harder. Now there's like over 400 different certifications that you could choose from and it's you know, going by some of the comments on my videos, people are asking questions where like, where do they even start? What should they do first? And it is a tricky thing to, to try and figure out. So knowing what I know now, having 20 years experience in the IT industry, I thought it'd be worthwhile just to have a chat with you guys and give you maybe some advice, things that I would probably do again if I was to start all over again. So that's what we're going to talk about. If I met you in person and you asked me, how do I get into IT? This is the five different things that I would tell you to do. So the very first piece of advice that I would give anybody starting in IT is it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that is important for most things, but especially in IT. As you progress through your career, you'll meet lots of different people in different companies or at events. And those are the people that, that are really good to meet because people move around different businesses and a lot of opportunities come from that. If you don't know anybody in the industry right now, then make networking the number one thing in your list. A few good places that you can actually look is on meetup.com. I've just typed in cloud security in Dublin. And as you can see, there's a lot of different groups here there's lots of different things that I could go and try and meet people it's always good to kind of meet people in person as well if you can there is some online events here these are a great way to get to know people in the industry there's also a lot of the big cloud providers I know for example Amazon Web Services does have a user group I used to go to them in London and in Sydney they're in most major cities and what happens there is they go and they have a, like a speaker from a particular company and then after the event they do like a networking thing where you can have drinks and coffees and stuff and everybody just chats and gets to know each other and it's it's stuff like that where you can make really really good contacts also another good place is LinkedIn you can see there's loads and loads of groups here to join now you can join those groups and start commenting on some of the threads just really try to get your name out there so that's number one I think getting to know people making good contacts it's not what you know it's who you know is such an important thing to do the next thing you need to do is to build experience. Now, I know it's hard to get a job at the moment because they usually say they want two years experience, but you can't get that experience because you can't get a job. So it is hard. There is a few things that you can do that will actually help you. On YouTube, there is thousands and probably millions of different types of tutorials and technical videos that you can follow through. I built one last year around the Ultimate Cybersecurity Lab project. This gives you a lot of good hands-on skills around building networks, building a lot of the different tools and it goes down through a number of different things. It starts off with the networks, then it looks at Kali, there is some technology around containers, there's a stuff around here around Windows, building domain controllers. Then this is some of the like the Hive and Cortex. And then this one here is actually building VPNs to the cloud. So this one here will give you quite a good range of technical skills. But this isn't the only one. There's loads on YouTube there that you can actually follow and get some hands-on experience. Once you start building labs and spend a few months going through tutorials and actually getting some hands-on experience, then use what you've learned and talk to those people that you've networked with that the people that you know just tell them like you know i built this network architecture i've did all of these cybersecurity initiatives just at home in a home lab believe me that stuff self-learning and building labs at homes that is huge and you'd be surprised that there isn't a lot of people that actually do it so don't just jump straight into certifications spend some time trying to actually build hands-on experience and don't be afraid to put that on linkedin talk about the different technology and the different labs you're building on linkedin because people do actually see that once you've spent a bit of time building things and getting some hands-on experience the next thing you will probably want to do is to get 
a certification under your belt get some hands-on certifications that will help you get that first role looking at this diagram by paul jeremy you can see here that there's 481 certifications that is a minefield like where do you even start you can go through this and maybe start at the bottom and try and look at some of the certifications that sound interesting the other way you can do it is to go on some job websites just to go on linkedin or indeed or any of those websites and start searching for a lot of the roles that you're interested in document a lot of the requirements for those roles and if you do this over a period of time if you spend a bit of time researching all of the different roles you will start to see a lot of the same certifications coming up in those roles like in this cybersecurity analyst role, you can see the requirements for this role and they've actually listed some different certifications and things you need to know in order to be successful in this role. Hey, sorry to interrupt the video. I'm just literally editing this video right now and I'm just noticing that this particular ad for a cybersecurity analyst, the requirements are CISM, CISP, there's a bunch of other certifications, cloud credentials for a cybersecurity analyst role with minimum two years experience that is absolute nonsense like sometimes you get roles like this where they're an analyst level role and they're demanding you have the highest level of certification so just be aware of that this role is but this is ridiculous that's it sorry to disturb you back to the video you can start to make a list of all of the different requirements the technology and things you need to know but also the different certifications that will help you create your own roadmap and that'll help you choose which certifications you want to go to don't just jump into all of the new certifications there's so many different certifications out there make sure you do your research on the roles you want to get into and identify the certifications that will make you successful in those roles then you can choose the actual certs and just build your own roadmap this next one is something that you will learn as you get more experienced in your career, but the quicker you can do it, the better. And that is learn how to talk the talk, learn the lingo and learn how to talk about the projects you're working in, in like high level terms. If you go into an interview and you're talking about the networks or security initiatives you're working on and you're using things like, you know, I built this network and I did this security project and it was really interesting. You're going to come across as someone that, yeah, they've got some experience. But if you go in there and you can talk about those projects from a very high level, you go in and you say, yes, I completed this network architecture, I built this high, highly redundant environment, multiple servers, clusters. Then if you're able to explain what the business benefit is of doing those projects, like what was the benefit to the business? How did it make them more successful or how did have in a redundant environment help them for their business then you come across as someone that has a bit more experience and you're starting to see the high level picture of the projects you're not just doing the projects you understand the reasons why so the last thing and probably one of the most important things is don't be loyal to any company and by that i mean as you go through your career you'll start in your first it job you'll probably be on a help desk or you'll be in an entry level job you might not be enjoying that job but it's that's unfortunately that's a journey you have to go through you have to start somewhere you do all the entry level stuff once you've done that and if you're not having the opportunities in your current company to move into higher little projects or different types of technology that you want to get into don't hang around and hope that that will just come your way keep moving around until you get that experience in different companies the added benefit is you will also work with lots of different people you'll make lots of new contacts lots of different technology not all companies have the same tax so you'll get to spread your wings you'll find the different things that you're interested in and um, the final thing is you will most likely get a salary bump as you move around different companies but that is it that is five pieces of advice that I would follow myself if I was to start out in IT all over again I would do those five things let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you have any other advice to give people out there that's getting started in IT all the best see you soon